Hey everyone, let's talk about something we've all experienced, change. But before I get started, let me give a few seconds to say that is so cool that we are now past 1,000 subscribers. Thank you so, so much. I'm really glad you found the channel valuable enough to like, to subscribe, and do all that good stuff. So let's cover agile change, especially the reasons why some of that don't quite work out as planned. Now, we often hear about this huge company-wide agile transformations, but change can be as simple as a team trying to work better together. I have been even brought by agile teams who just wanted to improve their day-to-day -day regardless of what the rest of the company was doing. But here's the thing, big or small, change can be tricky. So in this video, we are diving into the top three reasons why agile change of any size can fail. And as we go through these, I want you to think about your own experiences. What has worked for you? Knowing what you know now, what would you do differently? So let's dive in. All right, reason number one of why your agile change might be hitting a wall, people are not asking, what's in it for me? Look, it's common for these big changes to start at the top. The executives get all excited about being more agile. Maybe it means more profit, maybe it's cutting costs, but here's the thing, companies aren't made of people. Just saying we are going agile or we are becoming more efficient doesn't mean much to someone in marketing, sales, or engineering, or not in the same way. They need to know how it impacts their work, their team, what's the benefit, what's the expected change, what stays the same, will it make their lives easier, more productive, more rewarding. You see, even small changes will cause disruption, and if people on the ground don't see the upside, they are going to resist. And so before you launch into execution mode for the change, take the time to help people figure out what's in it for me, for the team, for the individual, for every role. Okay, so as Agile coaches, what can we do? How can we make sure people are on board? First thing, don't assume bad intentions from the leadership. They are probably just excited about the change. Our job is to help them channel that excitement into something meaningful for everyone. That means getting everyone talking. And I mean, everyone impacted by this change. Ask them, what does it really mean for you? How does that affect your day to work? How do you think? What are your concerns? This is more about than just information. It's about making people feel heard and valued. Help them see how they fit into the bigger picture. Maybe their department is crucial to make the change work. Help them see their own potential. Change is scary, especially when we don't understand it. So as coaches, we help create an environment of open communication and support from the top down. That's how you turn resistance into excitement and get everyone moving in the same direction. Reason number two why agile transformations fail is this. People aren't invited to collaborate and to share their perspective. Think about it, nobody likes to feel unheard. When people feel like their ideas don't matter, they get frustrated and frustrated people aren't exactly known for being cooperative. They might even start working against the change. Beyond listening though, here is the key, let people contribute. Give them a voice and importantly, a sense of ownership. Think of it like this, who knows the ins and outs of a process better than the people who do it every day. They are the ones with hands-on experience to identify what works and what doesn't. They have probably even tried things in the past and have a history to tell. Now, I get it. You might encounter some resistance. Not everyone is going to be thrilled about the change, but even that resistance holds valuable information. It tells you about the challenges, the roadblocks that you need to address to give people what they need. So work hard to give people that sort of autonomy to implement local solutions that, you know, so long as they are still aligned with the change vision. When people feel like they have a real stake in the change, that's when you unlock true ownership and commitment. So as Agile coaches, how do we unlock this collaborative execution? One word, facilitation. It's about creating the space for meaningful conversations in collaborative decision-making. 
start small with individuals and smaller teams and gradually bring those conversations to a larger stage involving leadership and then cross-functional groups. Remember, listening is just the first step. The real magic happens when we help teams connect the dots, understand each other's challenges and come up with solutions that work for everyone. Here's how to make the most of this process. One, <laughs> Don't waste people's time. Ideas need to be acted upon. If you collect suggestions, but then ignore them, you create cynicism and distrust. People need to see that their input matters. Two, be transparent about your decision-making. Just because an idea isn't chosen right now, doesn't mean that it's bad. Maybe it's not the right time or it needs further development. Help folks explain their rationale for ideas and keep those ideas on the back burner. And three, remember your role as a facilitator. Guide the conversation, challenge assumptions, offer your expertise. But ultimately, the decisions about how to implement change need to come from the people who are closest to the work. And once those decisions are made, that's when you, as the Agile coach, get to pull out your amazing tools and techniques to support the team in making their vision a reality. Reason number three why your Agile change might be off track, idea versus reality. Leaders are saying one thing, but rewarding another. We've all seen it before, those shiny new company values proudly displayed on the walls of the organizations while everyone whispers about how they're just for show. The truth is that actions speak louder than words. Maybe some leaders are pushing for more collaboration, but performance reviews are still laser focused on individual achievements. Or it, they are encouraging self-organizing teams, but then they micromanage every little decision. This kind of disconnect creates confusion, frustration, and cynicism. It will undermine trust and it will send a clear message that, hey, we actually don't mean what we say. What can the Agile coach do here? Well, let's say, for example, that executives might say that collaboration and teams are at the heart of everything, but they have a hard time enabling team bonuses and other self-management rewards. End of the year recognition and money, it's still pretty much individual. Okay, if people continue to be judged individually, the collective approach is nothing but a speech. It will be just for show. Terrible for the reputation of the change and for the morale of every Everybody involved. Now, your job as the Agile coach is not to force collective remuneration and management approaches to take place. There are many different ways for implementing collaboration in community and in workplaces. And ultimately, Agile is not only about collaboration. Also, keep in mind that there are several degrees of implementation of any idea until everybody can reach a level at which they are satisfied. If a team cannot even orient themselves consistently around the goal, it's probably too soon to talk about team-driven bonuses. What is your job as the Agile coach, though, is to make the discrepancies visible. What are the behaviors in places that are in contradiction with the change? Why are these things happening? And why are they allowed to happen? What kind of message does it send? Even better if you were there facilitating the discussions that led to the decision that they all made, because now you can reference those moments. You help the leaders understand that the only way to change culture and values is to live the behaviors that enact them. The culture in place is the culture reflected in people's actions, which in turn, shows how they think. So be courageous and speak about the inconsistencies that you see that undermine the Agile change. So there you have it, three very common reasons why Agile change fail. But the good news is by understanding these pitfalls, you can avoid them. Remember to help people focus on what's in it for me, for every individual and for the teams and departments that they form so that the change makes sense. Empower people to collaborate and execute their ideas and crucially, help make sure actions are aligned with words and signal when they are not. Now, I'd love to hear from you. What are your biggest challenges with Agile change? Share your experiences and anything that you want in the comments below and let's keep this conversation going. And once again, thank you so much for watching, liking and subscribing and making our community grow. This video ends here and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.